and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi. Welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. This is episode 10, and I'm excited for episode 10 because I know that there are podcasters out there with hundreds of episodes, but for me, episode 10 means that I'm really committed, that I have to show up every week and make a podcast, and it's something I never thought I would be able to do. And I'm doing it. Here I am doing it, which means that if there's the thing that you want to do, you can do it too. And in my mastermind group this week, month and in my online coaching group this month, we're talking about how to make the things that we want a reality. And in order to do that, you need to really be present. What I'm about to teach you today is helping my clients get present because they're really learning about who they want to be in any given moment. So in order to teach this to you today, I need to kind of travel back to the 80s And I want to admit to you, I was basically a really uncool 80s kid. I didn't have Jordache jeans. I didn't have guest jeans. I didn't have parachute pants. I wasn't allowed to have clogs. My mother didn't believe in them. And also there were four kids and no money. I had a lot of complaining, a lot of like deprivation. I was mostly miserable, but my mother had zero time for my nonsense. So I spent most of the 80s really pissed off. I wanted the reputation as somebody who was cool and had money and was fashionable, but my mother didn't seem to understand that my reputation depended on me having a pair of Jordache jeans. So I was always like, mom, come on, what are people going to think that I'm uncool and I'm poor? But mostly I was really worried that people in high school wouldn't want to spend time with me because I didn't have the right clothes. The truth was, of all the people that I was trying to impress in high school, the toughest one was myself. I thought I was uncool, poor, and not worth spending time with. And frankly, it made me a really negative, kind of sucky person. So why am I sharing the horrible realities of my teenagerhood as a fashion victim? Because I really want to teach you about an insight that recently blew my mind about who I want to be, and then, of course, who my clients want to be. And here it is in a nutshell. Today, I'm teaching about reputation versus character. And I never really understood the difference between the the two until I heard this statement. Reputation is who people think you are. Character is who you think you are. And I want to say that again because I don't think I did it justice. So listen up again. Reputation is who people think you are. Character is who you think you are. And I want you to guess which one of those two things you have absolute control over. Here's why this is important. I spent so much of my life worrying about what people thought of me, what my reputation was, that it kept me from really knowing what I thought of me or what I wanted for myself. And I want to teach this to you today because a lot of my clients don't know what they want for themselves. They know what they want to fit in with their friend group or the uh, people that they work with, but they don't know what they want for themselves. So let me tell you that I cared so much about my reputation that I forgot to care about my character, which is a really sucky place to spend a lot of time, especially if you're a tween and a teen. And remember, at that age, there's nothing more that you want than to be part of a group, accepted and cool. However, for me, I carried that concern into my 20s and 30s. And what it looks like was buffering against feeling lost and feeling 
unaccepted by totally overspending to make up for not having those Jordache jeans in 1981. That got me deeply into debt. And that's another story for another podcast. But man, I wish I'd understood the difference between caring what people thought about me and caring what I thought about myself and not letting the two cross over. Here's what I've learned and I want to share. You can't control your reputation. Now, I know you probably don't believe me because I didn't believe this for a while. You're probably saying, of course you can control your reputation. You just have to do everything right and show up in the right way and make sure people see you doing the good things and be perfect. And then everybody will have a good opinion of you. Everybody will like me. And I'm sorry to say that that is just not true. And to spend time worrying about what other people think of you is a huge waste of your time and energy. And my goal is always to help you get time and energy back. Here's the problem. Regardless of how perfect we are or try to be, there is always someone out there who doesn't like us, someone who doesn't think we're the greatest, someone who's talking shit about us. And who knows why they talk about us? They could talk about us because we look too perfect or because we look imperfect or because they see beyond the mask or maybe they think you're just a total jerk. Whatever it is, there's somebody out there who is talking shit about you. And it doesn't matter how hard you try to be good and to be perfect and to do the right thing. There is somebody out there who's still talking about you. Now, you know this is true because there's probably somebody in your life that you do that for. I mean, I I know that that's true for me. There's people that I just don't like no matter what. We have zero control over what other people think of us. And there's that old saying that what other people think of you is not your business, but I never believed that. I was like, like, oh yes, that is my business. And I am going to make sure that everybody likes me by trying to be perfect. I have wasted so much time and energy and I have realized that I don't have any control over what people say about me or think about me. If people think bad things about me or they say bad things about me, the only control I have is how I respond to that. What do you put out in the world to respond to it? Now, you might go back at somebody and try to convince them, but It's really hard to convince people to change their minds and you can't stop people from thinking bad thoughts or saying bad things. And so you might as well trying to stop because it's 100% out of your control. Now, if you're like me, maybe you're freaking out about this, but I want you to understand that this is actually good news because it's very freeing to know that all you can do is control how you show up in the world. That's your character, how you think of yourself. How do you want to show up in the world? Who do you want to be in the world? We have zero control over any other adult's behavior, thoughts, and feelings. And when you can accept that truth, then it lets you accept that you have zero control over what they think of you. In other words, we don't have control of our reputation. And I'm not saying that this is pleasant news. It's really hard to swallow at first, but my hope is that you can see you only have control of your character. You only have 100% control over how you view yourself. Now, how freeing is that? Because you can let go of what other people think of you and just show up with who you want to be. How much time and energy and money would I have saved if I'd known this back in 1988 as a non-designer gene wearing member of Babylon High School senior class? I wanted to share this example of where I'm currently still working on my character because this is not something that you fix and it goes away. It's an idea that you carry around with you and then you manage your mind around it. You've got to keep figuring out who you want to be. And here's a recent issue. Maybe it'll sound familiar to you. You know those times when you're just plugging along and things are fine and then boom, there's an annoying text that comes in with an issue that you have to solve for right away. You know the kind. It's not problematic in that it's the end of the world, but it starts the mental gymnastics because you've got to figure it out. It's just annoying. So a text like that happened recently. It came in and it sent me really far into my head, climbing onto the internal hamster wheel to figure out a solution. 
And at that very moment, my son Jack walked into the room having no idea what was going on in my head or on my phone, and he dared to ask me a question. And I was still on the mental hamster wheel, so I snapped. And my tone was harsh, and my words were very short and unkind. And so what I said was, Jack, I can't deal with you right now. Can't you see I'm busy? And it was very dismissive. And it was very like, it was rude. And his eyes got wide and started to rim with water. And uh, even recalling the look of confusion and hurt on his face kills me as I talk about this. His face crumpled and he looked at me and said, what's going on? What did I do something wrong? How can I help? And then of course that makes it worse because now I'm just truly a jerk. He did nothing wrong. He just wanted to help me. So let's pack what this might do to my reputation if this had happened in public. So if if somebody witnessed this interaction, another parent may have judged me for snapping and yelling at my kid. Maybe they would think, oh, that mother is a meanie. She's obviously got a strained relationship with her kid. What a jerk. And that's reputation, right? And no matter what justifications I'd have given to this person, no, 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 you don't understand. We have a really great relationship. We speak all the time. I likely couldn't have made her think otherwise. I have no control over what she thinks. That other parent gets to think whatever she wants. It's shitty, but I have no control over it. But let's unpack what the behavior did to my character. The worst part of this interaction isn't that somebody might have witnessed it and thought something bad. The worst part of this interaction with Jack is that as a parent, my job is to be very conscious of staying pretty calm. I overly conscious of not snapping because that was something that broke me as a child. I never understood why my mom was always irritated with me. Now I know that it had very little to do with me and everything to do with her world. But as a kid, I I didn't get that. And I don't want to do that to Jack. That's not the character I want to build. Nor is it the reputation I want to have. But remember, I can't control my reputation. I can only control who I am. So this is hard to admit, but someone having an opinion will have that opinion regardless of what I do or say. So in that moment, I realized that though I've been intentional about this whole parenting thing, I'm still not perfect no matter how much I try. I keep screwing up over and over. So what's the best that I can do? Well, I can be intentional. And that's the presence that I'm teaching to my group clients right now. I can notice the screw ups. I can apologize and move on. And I keep becoming the best mom I can be, a patient mom, one who doesn't blow up. That's the opinion I want to have of myself. That's the mom I want to be. And regardless of whether this exchange with Jack happened in public or in private, I want to have a good opinion of myself so that even if somebody else had a bad opinion of me, I know that I'm standing in my own integrity. I know that even if I've made a crappy decision or something looked bad, I know who I am at my core. And none of that can happen if I'm constantly living in the past, blaming and judging and ruminating and reliving nor can it happen if I'm living in the future, worrying and anxious and what ifing all over the place. It's my opinion of myself that I have to live with, and that's the work that I have to do. And I have to live with myself when it goes off track. Not if it goes off track, but when it goes off track, because it will. Here's the bottom line. Do you want to improve your relationship with yourself? This is what you have to do to do it. Number one, get honest with yourself. Get clear, and it's often not pretty. Doing this is hard and tiring work, but I promise you, worrying less about your reputation and what that mom on the playground might have thought of you and worrying more about who you want to be brings much more energy back into your life. When you have more energy, that creates the time and space for you to create the thing you want to create, to live a life that doesn't feel filled with anxiety, worry, or dis-ease. What is the relationship you want to cultivate with yourself? Who do you want to show up as? You have to name it. I'm a person who. And what would you fill that blank in with? Now, if you screwed up like the rest of us do, 
that's okay. Decide how you want it to be next time and move toward being that person one teeny tiny self-reflective step at a time. Work on letting the noise of what did she think? What's my reputation? What are people thinking? Let it subside a bit as you start to really engage with what's my character and who do I want to be? And if you're wondering more about how to do this, great. Show up next week because I'm going to share a tool that I use with my clients to help you get there. And if you're tired of doing this alone and you want some support, that's why I have online group accountability coaching designed specifically to help you cultivate the relationship with yourself. Here's the three things that we do. We first master time. When you become a time master, it gives you so much more energy to do the really hard work of mastering what's in your mind. When we master what's going on in your mindset, then you can master your life. You achieve goals, you make shit happen, you become the person you want to be. And if you don't believe it's true, I wish that you would take a look at my Facebook page because there's testimonials on there, but there's also videos on there of people telling you how they did it. So go check out my Facebook page. It's at Jen Liddy Coach, J-E-N-L-I-D-D-Y Coach. And you'll see interviews with women who have actually made this a reality. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next week when I share that tool to help you get where you want to go. Merry Christmas if you're celebrating Christmas and happy holidays. I'll see you next week right before the new year. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.